Good morning children and welcome to this Sunday school session. Children, at times you may be thinking if God created us good, how come we do bad? How did evil enter our hearts? Why should innocent people, especially children, suffer and have to die? In this lesson, you will go through two biblical accounts the fall of adam and eve and the first murder cain kills abel in one of the lanes of mumbai city a group of boys were playing a cruel game they had caught sight of a miserable wayside abandoned kitten barely a week old immediately the boys collected stones and began to throw them at the poor creature deriving great pleasure at torturing it one stone at a time here kitten take this one said one boy as he hurled a stone at its eye and squealed in delight the kitten purred out of pain blood oozed out of its eyes and paws yet the boys continued to hit it one last stone aimed at its heart and the kitten died the boys clapped their hands and went home happy as ever Here are some questions to ponder upon. The kitten purred out of pain. Yet the boys enjoyed hitting it with stones. Why? Human beings willfully or unwittingly do evil things. Do you agree? Think of some examples. Is controlling such behavior impossible? Have you faced this tension in yourself? Children, we all seem to have a tendency to be drawn towards choosing evil instead of good, to do wrong in- instead of the right thing. Let us watch these short videos on Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. One day, the serpent, the most clever of all the wild animals, asked the woman, Did God really say you must not eat the fruit from any of the trees in the garden? Of course we may, the woman replied. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we are not allowed to eat. God said, You must not eat it or even touch it. If you do, you will die. You will not die, the serpent exclaimed. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it, and you will be like God, knowing both good and evil. When the serpent was done speaking, the woman did eat the forbidden fruit and shared it with her husband. At that moment their eyes were opened. They felt shame by their nakedness, so they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Adam and Eve had two sons. One was Cain and the other was Abel. Abel was a sheep herder and spent his days taking care of his flock. In the meantime, Cain decided to work the land. Adam's firstborn devoted himself to the art of agriculture. Cain sacrificed part of the fruits of the land and offered them to the Lord. Abel, in turn, sacrificed one of his most valuable lambs in honor of God, and he was very pleased. But God was not happy with Cain's sacrifice. God noticed that anger was changing Cain's expression and told him that evilness was at the door and it would conquer him unless he did something to act against it. But evilness had already dominated Cain's heart. He invited his brother for a walk and the innocent man had no idea of Cain's evil plan. Abel was stunned when he felt his brother's attack. Cain viciously hit Abel and took his life. 
When he returned home, God questioned Cain, who wanted to know Abel's whereabouts. Cain said he did not know, since he was not responsible for his brother. God was enraged with what Cain had done and cursed him. He declared that the land that drank his brother's blood would no longer give him any strength, and therefore, Cain would become a despised wanderer in this world. Cain said that such a curse was excruciating. Anyone would feel the urge to kill him. But God marked the killer with a sign. Anyone who decided to kill Cain would suffer seven times as much. Have you noticed, children, how the serpent put the question to Eve? The serpent asked Eve if she was forbidden to eat of all the trees. So what was the serpent trying to do? It was trying to poison Eve's mind against God. It presented God as a person who curbs, who restricts, who prohibits. The serpent leads Eve to forget all the good things that God has done and all the things that God has permitted her to do. The serpent deceives Eve by showing how God kept for himself the best part of life that is the knowledge of everything. How does Eve feel now after the serpent has poisoned her mind? She feels within herself the urge to rebel. Why did God prevent me from eating of this tree? She doubts. She feels greedy. She wants to grab all. She begins to doubt God, to distrust His word and feels she can become God, totally wise, independent and powerful without any limits. The desire to eat the forbidden fruit keeps echoing in her being and very soon she is unable to make out the truth from falsehood and so yields to the temptation. The story of Adam and Eve tempted by the serpent symbolizes our own choice experience in life, isn't it? We too find ourselves placed in situations which call for a choice between God's plans and our own. At such moments, we should remind ourselves that we will be strongly drawn to do what is forbidden rather than to do what is permitted and thus unconsciously bring harm and unhappiness to ourselves. The limit that God put on Adam and Eve was not like a prohibition. It tells man that God requires him to live according to the Creator's will, just like we live by the law of the country, so that there is law and order. So when man breaks his relationship with God by disobeying, man has to bear the consequence of his acts. After they disobey God, Adam and Eve discover that they are naked which means they realized they are weak, fragile and in need of God's protection and care. They are dependent on God and cannot be masters of themselves. However, God was true to his loving nature and continued his care and protection over Adam and Eve. Now let us look at the story of Cain and Abel. This story brings out the battle between the flesh and the spirit in humans. On the one hand, Cain is being drawn to give in to his feelings of jealousy and violence. And on the other hand, he is hearing the voice of God asking him to smile and not scowl. God was offering him a change to make up for the non-pleasing offering he made to God. God said, if you do well, 
will you not be accepted god kept cain free in the face of sin and reminds him that he can and must overcome sin he said to cain its desire is for you but you must master it cain had a choice in the matter the choice between restoring his friendship with god or yielding to the temptation of doing away with abel there is a point to note that god still protected cain even after the murder when cain expressed his fear after the murder god puts a sign on him a sign of his friendship in order to safeguard him from any other human wishing to avenge abel's death our god's love is unconditional even a murderer can restore his friendship with god who is all forgiving let us silence our hearts and mind to hear the word of god a reading from genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, "Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden?" The woman said to the serpent, "We may eat of all the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden." nor shall you touch it or you shall die but the serpent said to the woman you will not die for god knows that when you eat of it your eyes will be opened and you will be like god knowing good and evil a reading from genesis chapter 4 verses 4b to 7 and the lord had regard for abel and his offering but for cain and his offering he had no regard so cain was very angry and his countenance fell the lord said to cain why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen if you do well will you not be accepted and if you do not do well sin is lurking at the door its desire is for you but you must master it the word of the lord thanks be to god keep your eyes closed children and let's ponder Are you faced with difficult situations where you have the urge to rebel and give back? Are your hearts more inclined towards wickedness such as creating a rift, gossiping, degrading another person, etc.? When you are faced with such a situation, run to Jesus in prayer. He went through the same temptations that you go through and yet he was found with no sin. Pray to Jesus that he keeps you away from such evil thoughts and wickedness. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you. for paying the price for me on the cross you have always been there for me even when i am faced with trials and temptations i have no power of my own lord and i rely on your power to overcome temptation today jesus you overcame satan's temptations give me the wisdom to walk away when i am tempted and the clarity to see the way out 
Thank you, Jesus, for being here for me. Amen. At times, just like Eve, you may feel that it's okay to sin. It's just a small bite. What difference does it make? But children, remember, it was due to the disobedience or sin of Adam and Eve. A gap was formed between God and man. And it was Jesus who had to pay the price to fill this gap by sacrificing himself for you and me and making us one with God. We are one with God through Jesus. Children, despite your sins, disobedience, weakness, no matter how bad your sin is, you can confidently run to Jesus through confession and be assured that you will be forgiven. God loves you unconditionally and wants you to return to Him with a contrite heart. I end the session by quoting a beautiful verse from the Bible and that is 1 John chapter 1 verse 9. But if we confess our sins to God, He will keep His promise and do what is right. He will forgive us our sins and purify us from all our wrongdoing. Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you some. Mother to win, fight manfully onward, dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus, He will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, comfort, strengthen, and keep. Willing to aid you, he will carry you through. Shun evil companions, bad language disdain. God's name hold in reverence, nor take it in vain. Be thoughtful and For your activity, write down the verse from 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 in your notebook and memorize it. Answer the following question. Give an example of a temptation that you faced and what was your choice? What was the consequence of your choice? We come to the end of our session, children. Have a lovely Sunday. 
God bless you all and stay safe.